Thank you again for joining. We're going to get started with the second installment of this SPM reporting webinar series, The Unexpected Outcomes of Great Service Now SPM Reporting and How to Achieve Them. So just to rehash, yesterday uh, was the first installment, and it was highly focused around project status reporting and getting the incentives aligned for good data quality and adoption at the data entry level great quality standardized project status report templates and then producing that scale so that the different uh, executive stakeholders steering committees in the business could consume the information correctly today we're going to take uh take the lens slightly further out and focus on program and portfolio level reporting so um, there's going to be a lot of overlap uh, between the concepts uh, of yesterday's presentation and today's, but it's all going to be about rolling up a much bigger amount of data into really clear, concise, consistent updates for executives. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, won't spend a ton of time here, but just again, uh, Vivid Charts, uh, the company, we're a, Vivid, uh, or we're a ServiceNow Elite Technology Partner. So everything in the product you see today is built native to ServiceNow, plugs directly in your instance as a customer, and we build apps for key functional areas. So SPM in particular is what we're going to be focusing on today. Primary drivers of... Uh, of the, the areas Vivid Charts is focused on is where and when is data leaving the platform for reporting purposes. So on a weekly basis, we get actually slide decks sent to us for steering committee updates. So you're going to see some examples of how we can automate those things today and what some of the key outcomes we can drive as a result. So let's let's start by again just defining what are the outcomes we're trying to drive towards and that we see customers realizing when they get great reporting around program and portfolio health. So first, clarity around the prioritized programs to ensure resource alignment. Number two, quicker decision making to ensure program and portfolio health. And number three, Effortless project steering committee deck creation with always live data, which we're going to see some examples of in the product today. And just like yesterday, we're going to go uh, a layer deeper on each of these three outcomes. So top of mind, and we're going to reference back to this all throughout the presentation in the slides, as well as when we go in the product, is the three primary SPM personas involved. So yesterday we talked about uh, the project manager level and the task level data getting updated consistently. Today, we're going to focus a lot on the portfolio manager level where you have to roll up a significant amount of data, but you have to present it in a way where you're focusing on the areas that you need to focus on with your executive team, your steering committee, your functional leaders who are your stakeholders of the work being done. So we're going to focus a lot or point back a lot to each of these personas as we dig into the outcomes and get into the product today. We're also going to point back to the, the typical phases of a project and really just putting this up here again to articulate as each of these phases are progressing, initiating, planning, executing, the data underneath is getting updated constantly. So it becomes very, very important as that data is getting updated to have a really easy way for portfolio owners and program owners to provide rollups of the data to make key decisions with stakeholders and steering committees. So data is constantly changing throughout these phases as it's progressing. How do we make the rollups easy so that decision making can happen quickly? Here's just a, another rehash of the, the classic project work breakdown structure. And again, look at all of the task level data that's happening just for a single project. So to pull the lens further out, how do we pull, how do we start to bubble up which task level information, the risks, issues, the health indicators? How do we choose and roll up the most important data to the audience that needs to make decisions or help remove barriers to success. We're going to show that today. We'll pull back up one more time the project communication continuum here and 
Today's presentation is going to be primarily around this right side of the spectrum here. So a lot of manual updates uh, taking place in PowerPoint for steering committees to get data bubbled up that lives at the task level, lives at the related list level in service now, but gets presented out of PowerPoint to steering committees. And we're also gonna touch on road mapping. How again do we make our road mapping conversations data driven? So we're gonna dive into that today and show you it in the product as well. So let's start to go a layer deeper on each of the three outcomes for today. So outcome number one, clarity around prioritized programs to ensure resource alignment. So what we hear in terms of the current state around this, aggregating program and portfolio data is cumbersome in ServiceNow. All of the data is there, but there's so many different places that you have to go to get specific data points. What becomes difficult and often manual is taking the data and aggregating it up into a nice roll up that's presentable that drives a business conversation. So that's that's one of the big barriers to to realizing this outcome. Roadmap reporting is manual and static and external to ServiceNow and this is not to say ServiceNow doesn't have powerful road mapping capabilities. They absolutely do. The alignment planner workspace is fantastic, but often what we hear uh, around this is the, the same challenge. It's presenting so much data. When we go to a specific meeting, we need a subset of that. So how do we get just a portion of that in a nice presentable fashion? That's where we end up in PowerPoint a lot of the time. And then when we end up in PowerPoint, live data is only available to those users that come into ServiceNow, work in ServiceNow, know how to navigate to the different interfaces. So how do we start to unlock that live data for these other personas that aren't working in service now on a daily basis? So some of the things we're, we're going to show in, in some of the tooling that we provide um, within our product is program summary reviews that are tailored, right? So specific information that your stakeholders want to see. And as we see this get implemented, right, we bring those stakeholders into the process and let them voice what, what information is necessary in a nice program update or portfolio update. Accessible reporting that doesn't require advanced understanding of service now, right? There's so many great, valuable data sources within the platform, but sometimes it takes a lot of skill to navigate and know where to get different data points. So how do we, one, get consensus on what data points are important, template them so that they're very accessible for this persona? And when we do all of that, stakeholders start to see where resources are needed across portfolios, and you can build more of a consensus around the roadmap and prioritize programs driven off of the live data itself. And, and by the way, removing a lot of manual effort on, on the PowerPoint creation in the process. So outcome number one, we're going to show some examples of clarity around prioritized programs to ensure resource alignment. Let's step to the second outcome here. Quicker decision-making to ensure program and portfolio health. So roadmap and portfolio reporting is only available on a monthly basis or predetermined cadence. Sometimes it's bi-weekly, right? And this is where, you know, a lot of the discussion happens during that cadence, but it's not necessarily where, you know, that's not the only time decisions are made throughout a month. So how do you facilitate uh, an easy automated report or deck for that meeting, but also make the data available live in between that cadence? Okay. Difficulty pivoting uh, or difficult to pivot priorities quickly requires a lot of data manipulation to see the full scope of, of the portfolio. So this is, again, bouncing from place to place to get different data points. This is where, again, it becomes very important to get to consensus on what are the data points you want to have as discussion points in the, the monthly, bi-weekly cadence, and delivering that consistently in a nice, concise format. So what do we want to do? Automate the live reporting out of service now, have it be data-driven in a familiar format, just like we saw yesterday at the project status level. We're going to show you today 
at the portfolio level and at the program level. And we're going to again go into the editor and show you some of the chart types we have that are specifically built to show portfolio health, to show program health, right? So getting the nice, uh, the, the set of visuals that help communicate that and being transparent with the, the risk and, and health reporting. When we provide that, the PMO can be more agile in pivoting priorities based on changing business needs. So if the, the data is there on a consistent basis, you can make more quick decisions uh, that are data-driven. Stakeholders are empowered to access the information they need quickly. And again, this can happen in the defined meeting cadence, or it can happen via self-service because we have the ability to share with those users and it gets easier to assess risk and get ahead of potential obstacles. So outcome number two, facilitate quicker decision-making to ensure program and portfolio health. Let's move to the third outcome here. And it's kind of summarizing both, right? Effortless project steering committee deck creation with always live data. Prepping for scheduled project steering committee meetings is a Herculean effort. We see some very large scale decks, 20, 30 slides that show, you know, individual portfolio health data, but also include statuses from each of the projects or demands that are being reviewed for funding. So how do we take that Herculean effort and make it easy and automated, provide that easy button? And when the process is manual, the, the data man manipulation and deck creation takes away PMO resources that could be leveraged for managing project work more effectively. So what we're going to show you and what we keep top of mind in the tooling that we provide, steering committee deck templates that can be built once, accessed with live data indefinitely, and added to over time. So as stakeholders ask for additional data points to be included in the deck, you as the PMO have the autonomy and the ability to update that template, to add new chart types, to add new data points so you can continue to have deeper discussions. We wanna automate the aggregation of this data that's already in service now. Eliminate that swivel chair where you're going to five different interfaces to get the data. Aggregate it all in that same consistent, concise format. And all in the spirit of spending more time ensuring good outcomes for PMO work and you know, allowing program and portfolio health to be assessed in between steering committee meetings without having to manually update slide decks. So outcome number three, effortless project steering committee deck creation with always live data. And we're going to jump into the product to see some of these concepts applied at the portfolio and program level here. So this is where we started yesterday. It's where we're going to start again today. This is the Vivid Charts editor, but we're seeing some different data and different charts at the portfolio level here. So we're going to look at portfolio roll up first, and then we're going to show, you know, okay, template the portfolio update, produce it at scale. And then we're going to move to program and show the same concept. So just like in the project update, everything you see on the screen here is a drag and drop chart type or styling element that we have full control over. So anything you see on this individual slide or any of the slides throughout the deck is fully configurable from a data perspective as well as a styling perspective. So you know, just to showcase this again for anyone who wasn't on the the first installment yesterday. If I just open up this really basic score chart type, you can see we have a container styled here, but I could update that just as easily to be a different color. So very configurable from a styling format, also configurable from a data format perspective. So if I open up the data menu here, you can see we're referencing the project table and each of the charts we have the ability to apply conditions to uh, define the aggregates, whether we want it to be clickable or not, et cetera. Now we're going to page through this presentation and it's much longer than an individual project status update because we're, there's a lot more data to look at at the portfolio level 
But because of that, we actually need to have different visuals in the arsenal. So the first one of those we're actually seeing here on the first slide, this project status heat map. So Vivid Charts as a platform has the ability to add charts to the library for specific process areas like portfolio and program. So this is a chart we added to specifically show, okay, here's the list of projects within this specific portfolio, but how is their overall health trending over time? So this little health indicator is going to be driven from the overall health of that project, and it's going to show a trend. So when you think about a steering committee meeting, where do you want to spend your time in that meeting? And how do you make it clear early and often? A chart like this can help show where are the red projects, uh, allow the discussion to be focused on those areas. And we have the ability to do that with other charts in the library as well. In the editor, again, this is where we define the data and the format of a consistent portfolio update. And as I just page through here, you're going to see we have a lot of slides put together that are going to show you know, a roadmap of the projects in flight. We can look at some more traditional data visualizations that are going to show us other health information, green, yellow, red, uh, projects by state, by priority. All of these charts are, again, fully configurable, can be conditioned down, and can be styled to tell the story that your stakeholders want to hear. At the portfolio level, we don't just need to talk about projects. We also need to be actively discussing on a consistent basis the demands that are being shaped, right? So how many are in draft, submitted, screening, qualified, and are any on the table for approval, right? Are we closing out three projects in the next two weeks and we need to approve three new demands to take their place? Again, charts added to the library to help tell the story around these different data types. So this Chevron chart type here is built specifically for demand data. You're going to see another version of this chart type in the demand webinar tomorrow and how we leverage it at the single demand level. And then you're seeing a little bit of a heat map here at the, the demand level where we're kind of ranking demands by priority on the one axis and impact on the other. And continuing on, what are the other data types we might need to have top of mind as a part of a steering committee update? We have risks, again, some data visualizations here and lists of risks and issues. So within the editor, it's all about define the standard and it's where you go to iterate on the standard. So if you get requests from stakeholders for additional data points, you can just add an additional slide and update the template that's leveraged for that automated steering committee deck. Now, once we have our template created, the next step in the process is to produce it at scale for all of the portfolios in the system. So I'm going to jump over to our summary interface here where you saw this applied at the project level yesterday. You're going to see it at the demand level tomorrow. But today we're going to look at how do we build a summary off of either portfolio or program? So you can see I have portfolio selected here. You can see I have two different templates available, but I have a template that I built in prep for the webinar today selected. I have our list style card template here, and I don't have any filters applied. We're looking at all eight portfolios in the system. And once you have your summary set up to do this, you can pull up that standard presentation for any of the portfolios in the system. So let's just have a look at the app modernization portfolio here. So now we're seeing that same set of visuals, but we're seeing it in the viewer where we can either present out of this zoomed out format here, we can present out a full screen and page through. So we can present off of live data here where we have some hover over functionality. We have the ability to click into the underlying data, but we can also download this as a PDF or PowerPoint to distribute to stakeholders coming out of the meeting. Now we mentioned this yesterday, but it's also really relevant for portfolio uh, for 
end users that maybe aren't working in service now on a daily basis, aren't licensed with that fulfiller role, we can still share with those users uh, or share with all logged in users. So you just have to authenticate into service now. So just kind of paging through what we looked at in the editor, we have this roadmap style visual. We have our standard data visualizations to show things like status, state, priority. We have a, a view here to review the demands for this specific portfolio. You know, anything that requires further discussion, just like we mentioned, we can click and get to the record level. We can even update the data on this record and see it reflected in the presentation. So automated creation of this entire portfolio deck update, and we can pull it up for any portfolio at any time that we need it. So here's another portfolio that we can page through less data in this one. Again, at the individual deck level, we can share with our stakeholders, but we can also share access to this page with specific users, groups, roles, or all logged in users so that outside of a steering committee update, a stakeholder could come in and actually self-serve some of this data as well. This covers the portfolio application of the technology. Let's have a look at program now. So there's going to be a lot of similarities. Let me get these tabs exited out of. And we're going to come over to a port or a program level summary. Now, just like from a configuration standpoint, like we did with portfolio, we're looking at program as the process area. I have the executive program briefing template applied here. This time we're going to use a program summary card. And again, no pre-filters applied here. So we're going to look at all 10 program records. Now we don't have as much program data in this instance, but we do have a good amount in the cloud transformation program. So let's have a look at what a standardized deck could look like at the program level. So pretty similar uh, front page here, but a few key differences to point out. A program within ServiceNow actually, just like a project, has a status reporting function. So over time, on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis, a program owner might submit a status report that indicates the overall health over time and where things are tracking on schedule costs, resources, and scope. So we have very similar chart types that we have for program that indicate health and then we're also utilizing some of the, the similar charts for portfolio here, where this is a project trend over time, but specifically for the projects within this program. So again, we can guide our discussions around what's not going well that we need to address as a steering committee. As we page through this, this is all driven by a template in the editor, just like we saw with portfolio. So um, this can look a lot different for different customers that we work with. So uh, this second slide is focused on risks at the program level and qualified demands that are ready to review for funding. But these charts could look very different depending on the story you need to tell for your steering committee. And then lastly, we have a few additional charts here, another roadmap Gantt style chart that's just looking at a single year. There's a few options in the chart library to look at a broader time frame as well. And then another chart type to, to provide uh, program level project data uh, where we're seeing a list of all the projects within the system, the overall health at the current state for each, and then the health of schedule, cost, resource, scope from the latest status report. So again, data is coming from all over the place, but getting rolled up into this really concise format to facilitate a, a high-level program discussion. Just like with the portfolio sharing export options, all the same at the program level as well. Now, last thing to call out, we covered this on the project uh, the project session yesterday, but we'll do the same here. Sometimes for a steering committee, we might have the standardized template 
that we're looking at and have standardized, but maybe going into a meeting, you as a portfolio or program owner actually need to update some things specifically for that meeting. Well, for that, we have the ability to go back into the editor. So let's say I'm the app modernization portfolio owner here. I can create a set, Steerco 2123, give it a name, and then we can create a view out of that set, which is not going to take me to the editor like we we're at before where we're updating the template. It's just letting me update a view for this specific meeting. So we have a net new view created now where I could again go add a slide for any of the meeting specific points that I need to cover. You know, for example, I could add an agenda slide. I could add a few charts to a, an additional slide that cover data points that my steering committee has voiced. We definitely need to cover in addition to the standard set of data. So a lot of optionality for portfolio owners and program owners to not just standardize, but still have the ability to make the, the update uh, their own and address needs uh, on an ad hoc basis there. So a lot of power for portfolio and program owners with this piece of functionality. Okay, so let's step back over into the slides here. When we standardize our updates, when we aggregate all of the data in a nice automated fashion, what are we providing? Clarity around prioritized programs to ensure resource alignment. We're facilitating quicker decision-making to ensure program and portfolio health. And we're taking a lot of manual effort out of the process when we're preparing for these meetings and making them more data-driven. So this is what we're driving towards. But again, like you saw in the product, there's a lot of ability to make this, uh, make this work for each customer individually. So tons of flexibility in the editor, in the chart library. So, um, you know, submit questions that come to mind today. Um, we can also have a more specific discussion for your needs uh, coming out of the session today. So just to wrap up the Vivid Charts application roadmap, we have a lot of enhancements already on the roadmap for the SPM suite, which you've seen now to date project, portfolio, and program. And tomorrow we're going to cover demand. Uh, but we also have quite a bit coming out in the ITSM world. So if you're more on the ServiceNow administrative side of things or a, a more universal developer, a lot of good stuff coming uh, in the similar, similar light for ITSM as well as for managed service providers. Now we're going to click into the Q&A here and let me pull these up and we'll start addressing some live. And please feel free to keep submitting. All right, so first question. Data-driven roadmap is a very good functionality to have in my experience. If you're linking resource availability while you're in the middle of program portfolio, someone physically has to go update resource availability. Is that what is expected here? So that the roadmap that we had pulled up was specifically driven off of project data for this specific example. However, we have charts in the library that you could point at resource data that can be updated live under the hood. So um, when you wanna think about in a deck like this, linking to uh, live resource data, there's other charts in the library that could, that could leverage that. If you do have a roadmap visual that you would like to be more resource driven, that would be a good conversation point for, for coming out of today's session. So great question, appreciate you submitting that. Next question, when we click on the roadmap, does the user land in ServiceNow list view or either project or demand? So on the roadmap, again, that roadmap in the example was pointing at project data. So when we click one of those bars, it's gonna take us specifically to that project level. Uh, we do have other roadmap visuals in the library that can point at project task data. So some of our customers will want a project specific Gantt for a project status report where it's just showing the breakdown of project tasks with start and end date. So in that case, it would click down to the, the project task. So great question there, uh, links directly to the project record itself. 
If you have 15 to 20 different teams in a given program, in my experience, it is a challenge to have all these 15 to 20 teams update their resource availability consistently, which in turn impacts program and portfolio. Yes, I mean, that that is absolutely a challenge. And what we've seen is that when you start to automate the reporting outputs, you incentivize better data quality. And when you get more eyes on the data, you have more ability to then go back to those teams that maybe aren't updating as consistently as you'd like and say, hey, we were we were trying to make a decision off of this, but it wasn't up to date. So it's a two-way street, right? You gotta, you're always gonna have to enforce some data integrity, data quality at the, the user level who actually has to update the data, but you can also incentivize it by having really good visible reporting and having executive visibility who can help enforce better data quality. So great question again. Okay. When I present to the steering committee, I used to have reason for an amber red status. Do you have a field for any reasons for amber red and pull it in for the steering committee presentation slide? So this is a really good question. So if you have a field or a reason behind an amber or red, Vivid Charts itself isn't going to add that field to service now. However, we have charts that can read that field. So a lot of the charts that you were seeing on, on these templates are just pointing at a specific field on the program portfolio or project level. So if you added a, a field to your service now instance that just uh, you know had the, the reason behind the amber or red status, we could pull that into the steering committee uh, presentation template. So really good question. We see this play out uh, at the project status level uh, as well as portfolio and program where just specific fields that are, you know, just organizational specific get added to the, the record and we can pull that into these templates as well. So really good question there. Um, just so, Everybody knows kind of some of the steps you can take coming out of here. Uh, there are a lot of questions today, even more so yesterday, that were around, hey, can we include this in the steering committee presentation deck? So please feel free to get in touch with us, book a live demo. And what we could do is actually talk about the data points that you would want to see in your template, or even pull up your PowerPoint version and build a template together that would align to that. So uh, don't hesitate to book a live demo with us. Schedule a one-to-one -one feedback session on anything that you saw today. Uh, there's a lot of great content coming out on LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, so please give us a follow there. Um, just another reminder, this is the second installment of this series. The third is tomorrow, and that's focused around demand data. Mm -hmm.